Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Welcome to a video where I am planning on putting together my big sunlight binders, the big blue binders that hold all of my instructor guides for my kids for the year. And I'm actually packing two big binders. And so I just received my sunlight box in the mail last week. I did a whole unboxing, go check it out, especially if you wanna see like all the books and all the other wonderful things that are in store for our next year's homeschool, which is the 2023, 2024 homeschool year. But today I'm going to be organizing my instructor's guides and I'm gonna be chatting through kind of why I do it the way I do it, some different tips for how you could potentially do it that might make it more efficient for you or to set it up for like ease of use throughout your school year. So let's just hop into the video because I'm so excited to get it all set up. So hi, my name is Angie. Welcome to the channel if you're new here or welcome back if you've been coming for a while. So like I said, we are gonna be organizing all of my sunlight materials today into those big blue sunlight binders. And so a quick disclaimer. So all of these materials were sent to me kindly by sunlight in exchange for my honest review. And so that's the plan for today. But before I flip the camera around and show you all of that, I do want to mention the fact that there are many ways to organize your sunlight instructor's guides. And so you might have an instructor's guide for history, Bible, literature, as well as science and language arts. And so you'll have a lot of paper to organize. And some people do like the idea of taking an instructor's guide, like say, here's one that I'm doing with my twins next year and getting it spiral bound. And that way they keep this one subject all contained and that would make things easier. Some people really like that and then they can kind of store it all individually, especially if you feel like you might get off track, like you get might get really ahead in science and really behind in something else, for instance, then that might be a good option. I've seen other people use just a three ring binder to put each instructor guide into. I personally like the big binders because they come with those weekly tabs so I can work kind of in a weekly fashion and I can move that chunk of instructor guides to what I call a working binder. And I will be making a video all about that as I set up my planner for the year. So stay tuned for that. But those are some options that I have seen kind of floating around. I don't know, let me know down below if there are any other options you've seen or anything else you might do. But the plan for me is to put all of these guides into the big blue binders. So let's just flip the camera around and we can do that together. I have sat down and I have pulled out the instructor guides that I'm going to work on first. So I'm working on the programs for my older kids. So my kids will be nine and a half and eight come the fall, come when we start this program. And so these are the programs I have picked for them. So this is HBLC, this is Science C, and Language Arts 3 and Language Arts 4. And we're gonna be putting them in this big binder, which I have the nice HBLC label here. I do really like having these labels on the outside or on the spine of these binders because when I line them all up on my bookshelf, it just looks better. So. These are the instructor's guides, but you also do get some other things. So some of the extra paper things you might have picked up are things like this. So here's like a set. So here's a set of extra activity sheets. This is for language arts three because my daughter will be needing these for next year, but I have already purchased language arts, the whole instructor's guide and readers and everything like that for my son for this current year. And so I needed a refill for my daughter for the activity sheets. And my first recommendation slash tip for this is to find some place to file them because I honestly do not just give these straight to my kids. Some people do. The age of my kids makes me worry that they might lose them. Other people I've heard of will spiral bind all the activity sheets, say like science and language arts and have one big activity sheet bundle for their kids. That totally works. We just don't spiral bind anything. So what I do instead is I've picked up this folder, but it's just a folder where you have multiple dividers and little pockets that you can store the papers in. Like for instance, right now, I still have the level three activity sheets for my son because he's on the off year. We start his language arts in January. So he just started level three in January. So that means he won't end until December, which actually does affect how I set up my binders. And I'll get more into that in just a second. So I still have these in here for him starting in the fall and then I have a full another set for my daughter so I will just tuck these right in. Another thing that you might get paper wise 
are the papers for the experiment. And so these are the Discover and Do third grade experiment paper packet. I don't put these in my big binder. Like I didn't put in the activity sheets in my big binder because it would just get too big. It's already gonna be quite large, I can imagine. It's gonna be a big one this year. So I won't put these in there. And I actually even won't put them in my blue folder here. I put these with my kit. They're made of kind of hard card stock, which I love, which is perfect for science experiments and notations. But I just put them up with the kit and I pull them down as needed. So it's important to kind of think through what you're gonna do with some of these other things too, because yes, I'm setting up the big binder, but I have all this other stuff I do not want to lose. But then the question is maybe where exactly are the activity sheets for language arts for? Because I just picked this program up for my son. So where are the activity sheets? So that's a really good question and I'm going to flip the camera back around and just kind of show it to you. And so where they are is actually in your language arts instructor guide. So I have taken all the shrink wrap off of all these. I didn't think you needed to watch me do that. But what I will have to do is go through all of these and pull out the activity sheets. And so I might do that right now. I don't think I'll film myself doing that, but I did want to mention that if you're wondering where are my activity sheets, they are in any of the new programs you have ordered. So for instance, the HBL does not have activity sheets, so that's fine, but the science does. So here are some more activity sheets that I'm going to be pulling out. And at this level, I still work together with my kids, so I decided not to buy them their individual science activity sheets, but they do have their individual language arts activity sheets. So let me do that real quick. Okay, so I got all the activity sheets taken out of both of these, and now it's time to load my big sunlight binder. So how I do this is I typically do it based on how I set up my day. So different people will do this differently. But for me personally, I tend to do language arts or at least sunlight language arts in the afternoon. So I will set up history, Bible literature first and then science. But what I'm doing here is I took out the first nine weeks or the tabs for the first nine weeks out of my big binder and I'm just going to start filling them and then I'll put them back in the binder. And now what I've done, because I realized it might be a little easier for you to see this way, is I put all, I guess you can't really see it either way, I put all four stacks here in front of me and then the tabs are out here and I'm gonna start pulling papers, basically. But I realized the first thing I do need to do is to pull off the stuff at the beginning. So what I put before week one is all the intro material. And this material is very important. So like for instance, here is HBLC, and then we have the map, and the map I'm gonna be putting in my working binder. So I'll show you all that when I set up my working binder, probably more in the summer. And then it has all the introductory pages that gives you a book list and things like that. And then you'll see it's just the first week here, the first grid. So I will lay this down in front of the week one tab and then I will grab the other things I have, so the science. And I do recommend that you spend some time looking at this material here and especially when it comes to the science because this is where Sunlight has that article that I'm always referring to on my channel where it talks about the company's approach to evolution and the age of the earth. So I'm gonna tuck this in the front too and so I also am going to be loading Sorry. Language Arts 4 and Language Arts 3. Like I said, my son is finishing out Language Arts 3, and so he will be finishing week 19 to 36 in the fall. So basically, I'll have HBL plus science plus the Language Arts for my son, which will be the second part of level three, and then Language Arts for my daughter, which will be Language Arts 3. So I'll be kind of loading it a little bit funny, but that's actually what I love about Sunlight. I love that this is all separated and I can set it up how I need it. I'm not trying to filter through different parts or putting different marks where my son is and where my daughter is. They get their own sheets and I just have to file them behind the right week. And the one thing I also wanna mention with the beginning papers of the language arts, maybe I'll use language arts three as the best example, is if you have never done a language arts program from Sunlight, please take some time to look through these like overview pages because it will share 
the heart behind the way sunlight teaches language arts it's a bit different it's a bit unique it might take some getting used to but it's all here and then the other thing i do recommend so say if you want some summer reading or just to really prepare yourself for next year is to look at those but within each of your guides the week number one is also very important it is where you get all the information for different things like for instance we're looking at language arts three and spelling across the top here and then it tells you how to do each spelling day for instance here it will tell you how to do the spelling for each day how to do the rule and write index cards pre-test how to check it how to do the post test so this is the full plan for the spelling program if you are using that spelling program right here now every week if i were to flip to week 18 it will not give you this much information so let's say you are further on you need to check back to week one to get the more detailed instructions and same for the creative expression and the readers and what to do with cultural literacy terms so it gives you all this information so for summer reading i recommend the pre-instructions as well as really looking through week one. Because I would say sunlight is very open and go, but it is recommended to look at at least those first sections ahead of time. But I'll stop talking about that and just start loading my pages and I'll come back and show you my progress. So to start off with, what I'm going to do is grab week one from everything. So week one from HBL, week one from science. Um, it also comes with the answers for the activity sheets, which is really handy to have in your instructor's guide. Then I'll be pulling language arts level three, week 19 for my son, and week one for my daughter. So that is week one. So I've got that all set up in this tab so that when I come to moving what I need from the big binder to my working binder, I will just be pulling this tab. And I won't have to go to four different places and four different instructor guides to do that. That's really why I love these big binders. So let me do the rest of this. Okay, so I got the first nine weeks done. There's the first nine tabs with all of my stuff behind them. And so that feels good and kind of in a rhythm now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just finish out all the way through week 36. It's going to be a big binder and then I'll show that to you. But don't go anywhere because I still have a lot to do because we have only done, this is only like section one and section two. There's actually section three and section four to each instructor's guide and they have important things. And so I want to make sure you know where those are and how I set up those sections as well. So stay tuned. I'm gonna finish this up real quick and then I actually still have to do my kindergartners and so I have HBLK and Science K still to do. So I have a lot left to do, but I'll be back shortly, but I'm making progress, which I'm really happy about. Okay guys, so the whole thing is filled. The important things I do want to draw your attention to now are section three and section four. So section three, so it is labeled in your instructor's guides what goes behind the tab for section three. And the first thing is, is reading assignments and notes. And so these are really important. So these are your read aloud notes. And so I've shared this tip in a number of videos, but I take these out and I fold them up and I use them as a bookmark when we're doing our read alouds. That way I keep the questions right there. And it also gives me the context. So when we're starting a book, I'll read the overview to the kids and that way they know what's coming and they know kind of the location as well as the year and different information like that. And so you have all of your read aloud notes. And then you can also see, there's also read aloud notes for the Aesop's Fables, which go from week one to 36. So I will be definitely taking those out as well as the poems. So this is new. I'm not sure if they had this last year in HBLC or not, but all levels now have poetry notes. And so that'll be really fun. Those are the poetry notes and then it takes you through all of the wonderful read alouds. I'm so excited for it. And then the next guide that has section three reading notes are your language arts programs. And this is the reader's notes and so say for instance you are using just the hbl but not the language arts you'll get a small instructor's guides that'll say like readers level three or something like that and you'll just get this set of notes and that way if you're not doing language arts you still have these discussion questions that you will discuss with your kids because the readers are also associated with the hbls so same here is i've I've pulled these ones out before. You can tell I have I folded these. So section three is where you will find all your notes for both read alouds and readers. And then also within language arts level three is the diamond notes. 
and those are back, I believe, either in Section 3 or Section 4. I don't know where they came originally, but I keep them back in Section 3, and I will pull these out, these instructions, and put them in my working binder during the first, I believe, six weeks of Language Arts 3 when we are using these extensively. That way I'll have access to them, but otherwise I just kind of store them in my blue binder. And then the last set of reader notes I have here are for Level 4. So that takes up a lot of your space, but then there is still this section for, and then I do pull out this list right here in specific, and I will put it in a sheet protector and I will put it in my working binder because I like to know what the plan is for language arts. What are they studying? What's the creative expression? Things like that. This is just really helpful. There's also these language arts skill checkoff list, and these are nice. I don't keep them in my working binder. I just check on them kind of maybe twice a year, maybe at the maybe three times at the beginning, mid, and end of the year. I'll kind of assess where my kids are. So I need to pull out this language arts scope and sequence for level three and level four. And so I'm going to do that. It also has some helpful things here in language arts three, some phonics rules, and I think spelling rules, yeah, and spelling guidelines. And so these are also helpful things to pull out, especially if you are using the language arts in its entirety, like it is your phonics program, which it is not for us, but for a lot of families I know it is. So this is a very helpful piece of paper, but it's in the back. And if you didn't know it was there, you wouldn't realize you had such a resource. And so that wraps up loading my big blue binder for my big kids for HBLC, Science C, Language Arts 3, and Language Arts 4. Oh my gosh, it's so heavy and hefty. And then for my kindergartners, I only have two things I am adding to their binder because we are not using the language arts program or I don't want to start the copy work and composition, which are my favorite parts of the language arts program for these younger years. I'll probably start that next year in their first grade year. And so what I am loading up is just their HBL. So world cultures as well as the science. And you can see I made a note that I'm actually missing week 22 and 23, which is just what happens when you buy it used and I didn't realize that those weren't in there, but it's okay. I'm sure I'll be able to kind of figure it out. I don't love that, but it'll be okay. So I'm just gonna load this really quick for my twins and it shouldn't take too long. And then I'll show you about how thick that is. It shouldn't be nearly as big because we don't have all the language arts. Okay guys, so I'm finally done. Oh my gosh, I'm a little bit tired, not gonna lie, but I'm really excited it's all done. So I have the kids, or the twins, stuff in here, and it's a little bit more basic. It's just a little bit of reading, a little history, Bible, literature, and science. I'm so excited. I'm so excited for this level. I haven't done the world cultures level yet with my kids, and so there's some books that have been sitting on our shelves that I've just been so excited for, and I'm excited that they, they did do a big switch this current year for fall of 2023, where this used to be level A and now it's HBLK. So we start here and then we move to American history next year. It just got a little rebranded where a lot of the readers stayed the same in the history and I believe the Bible switched. And so there's lots of videos about how that happened. I can link some below if you are in this situation, but I'm just kind of rolling with it. I had a lot of the books anyway and so I just moved them to different shelves if that makes sense. And you can see this one's not quite as big as say this one. Oh my gosh it's even hard to hold up. That's a lot of paper but it covers a lot of our school. So you guys I'm excited it's all set up. I'm ready for starting in the summer. I'm really trying this year to get ready a little quicker. So welcome back guys. I hope that was fun to see. I hope it was also helpful to kind of hear my thought process for why I set things up the way that I set them up. And also to just give you encouragement that it is not the most overwhelming thing. Sometimes when you get your big box in the mail, it feels very overwhelming. This is a wonderful first step, is to organize the material that you need to teach your kids and to do it in a way that makes sense to you. So let me know down below, how do you do this? Do you have some unique and fun tips that you want to share with all of us? Please let us know down below. And I always want to mention that I do have a link, an affiliate link to the Sunlight website. It also will give you a $10 off coupon, which is just handy. So I always have that down below in case that's where you're at. 
But otherwise, guys, I hope you liked the video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you want to, and I will see you in the next homeschool video. All right, take care.